Alright, I survived 100 days on an isolated survival island. Now, some of the things that we get up to building in this video get pretty crazy, so stick around to see how we transform this lonely little island into a sprawling, vibrant masterpiece. Also, real quick, before this video starts, if you enjoy the video at any point and you would be so kind, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing because these videos take a very long time to make. Now, without any further ado, on with the video. Okay, so day one on this lonely little island stranded out in the middle of nowhere, we began our journey by chopping down this singular tree that laid on the island. But whilst grabbing the wood, I noticed that there was a cave right next to it, but in instead of getting my stone from there and risking death this early on, I decided to get my stone from this big shard rocky thingy on the island instead, because that cave just looked quite ominous. Anyways, after grabbing some basic tools, a storm rolled in and it began to rain. So I guess this is kind of like an omen of how well this 100 days is going to go, so it ain't that great. But a little bit of rain isn't going to stop me from going around and breaking every single fibre of grass on this island in search of seeds to start a farm. And well, by the end of the grass breaking spree, we had a whole 20 seeds. So I got to work on planting them all down by the water, even though I, I guess everything that I do on this island is, is by the water, but... Anyways, after planting them all down, I leveled a bit of the island to open things up and to give me some more resources to expand later, and then I went and made myself a furnace and smelted down a piece of wood into charcoal, and then made some torches so that this night wouldn't be as dark. And then I went around planting down my saplings and finished off cutting down the tree, and well, this thunderstorm was not letting up, so I decided to grab my things and start heading down into the ominous cave we saw earlier. Mainly to avoid the rain, but also to possibly find some good loot down there. And, well, as soon as I entered the cave, there was some coal just sitting there waiting for me. So uh, I grabbed it, made a few more torches before traversing further down into the cave. Until we approached our first mob, which was an extremely trigger-happy creeper that just decided to blow up on me. And then I swiftly put an end to his zombie friend right here and headed deeper into the cave, finding quite a lot of iron dotted around. So I grabbed some of it and headed back up to the top of the cave because I didn't want to get greedy and regret it. So I made a little base of operations down here and began smelting down the iron. After smelting it all down, I made a pick, a sword, and a shield, and well, now we win, because shield beats everything in this game. Anyways, I headed back to the surface, and the rain had stopped now, and I also had two trees that grew on my island, so I quickly chopped them down, and headed back down into the bigger cave to grab some more iron, coal, and, and pumpkins? Yeah, there were pumpkins down here, so I guess that's the thing now. Uh, anyways, I stayed in the cave for the rest of the night, just making sure to be careful considering that I had absolutely no armor. And by the morning of day two, I grabbed quite a bit of coal and iron, so I headed back up and started smelting it all down, and whilst that was doing its thing, I headed back to the surface to start expanding my island out a little bit with all the dirt I gathered prior. And, well, it, it didn't make too much of a difference, but hey, at the end of the day, progress is progress. Anyways, I decided to head over to one of the many shipwrecks that surround my island to see if it had any good loot to offer me, and oh boy, was this a good idea. The loot on this shipwreck was pretty good, okay? I got some iron, I got some lapis, some paper, and some carrots. So overall, a very nice find to get this early on. Anyways, I spent a good portion of the day just grabbing wood from the boat because, well, it just sat here and I may as well take it because, well, I had big plans for this little island and they required a lot of wood. So uh, the more the better. Anyways, after making sure that that ship will never set sail again, I headed back to my island, took up my iron out the furnace, and then made myself a chest plate, a second pickaxe, a shovel, and an axe, and then went round planting all my carrots and had a lovely meal of stinky meat to get my hunger back up. Mmm, you gotta love, you gotta love stinky meat, it, mmm. And then I proceeded to spend the rest of the night landscaping the island. And on the morning of day three, things were looking pretty flat on the island, and, uh, well, they're not looking great, but don't worry, like I said earlier, I have big plans for this place, and this is just the beginning. Anyways, I decided to head back down and continue exploring the caves underneath the island in hopes of kitting myself out with iron, or if I'm lucky, maybe even scoring a diamond or two. Anyways, I found some more lapis and then stumbled across a spider when I realized that that's the only way for me to sleep on this island is by getting string from spiders and then crafting it into wool. So let's hope we can find some more. After traversing the case for a while, I had to eat myself some more stinky meat because I was getting hungry and really didn't have any other choice. And then just got straight back to mining, and after a while, I ended up finding a zombie villager with hella drip. So I killed his friend, and then proceeded to trap him in a cobblestone box to possibly use to trade with later. But then, all of a sudden, I found some diamonds, which are pretty high up for 1.18, but shortly after finding them, I then found a chest with some turtle eggs in it, and then I was confused at first, but then I remembered that this map was man-made, so some of the ores and chests and stuff obviously have been put here, so that, that's why they're that high. Anyways, I headed back to the surface to make myself some shiny new armor and a diamond pick, oh, and also our first piece of wool for a bed. 
But after making all that, I headed back to the surface and a lot of trees are going up here. It was, it was literally like a forest up here and we also had a beehive spawn now so we can have a cool bee farm later on. Yay! Anyways, I spent the night chopping down and replanting all of them because tomorrow we start work on building the island out properly. But before we get on to expanding things, this got me thinking. If I was stranded in a desolate island out in the middle of nowhere and can only bring one thing with me to help give me the energy to rebuild civilization, then there's no question. I'd have to choose G Fuel. And if you're unfamiliar with what G Fuel is, let me catch you up to speed. G Fuel is an amazing, delicious, sugar-free way for you to get your energy in a healthier way compared to other very sugary drinks. And you also may be thinking, hey, caffeine's not really for me. Well, don't worry, okay? There's a complete range of caffeine and sugar-free tubs just for you. So be sure to check out the link in the top right of the screen right now or in the description below. Use code POPPERS at checkout to get 30% off for this week and this week only. Once again, that's code POPPERS at checkout for 30% off until the 25th. And I mean, hey, 30% off to rebuild civilization, you know, I'll take it, all right? Go get yourself some energy. Anyways, as the sun rose on days 5 and 6, I got to work on building out the main island, so uh, now's probably the best time to tell you what my plan is for the actual layout of everything, so here we go. I want to build one main center island to have our house and stuff on there, followed by a second outer island or a little ring thingy going round, where it's like got a tree farm on it or something, and then maybe a couple more, depending on how big and how much time we have. But uh, yeah, that's the basic gist of everything. We'll see how it comes out. Anyways, I worked tirelessly into the night and into the next day, just placing down dirt until eventually the island was done and it was looking pretty good. Albeit now that the island was completely hollow underneath, but hey, we can't see it. It's not a problem. But anyways, after I was done with the dirt, I went around harvesting all my crops when I noticed that we now had two beehives. So that's nice. You know, the more of them buzzy boys, the better. And then I worked on just tidying up the layout of the island for the rest of the day and uh, phantoms also came after me at night and I killed them and got a couple of their membranes but they really messed me up during the process. On day 7, after working hard on landscaping the island for the past couple of days, I decided to head back down into the caves in search of spiders and well, it didn't take long for me to find a couple but they only dropped a total of 3 string. But shortly after I put an end to a zombie and it dropped a potato so uh, hey, that's a win in my books, you know, I'll take another food source, I am not complaining. More cave spelunking later. I, I think that's what cave exploring is called. I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, more spelunking later. Uh, I found a lava pool, but there was nothing down there. So uh, I shall leave it for now. And later on, when I want to grab obsidian, I'll come back down here and that's where I'll get it from. Oh, and I also found a mob spawner while I was down here. Sadly, it was a zombie spawner. But hey, I got a load of string from the chest. So now I can make a bed. So after getting some string, I headed back up to the surface to start smelting my iron down and then made a bed as well as farmed out some potatoes and then made a smoker to cook them in and then worked on improving the mine for most of the night before finally heading to bed after a week of no sleep. Okay, so on the morning of day 8, things were really starting to come together. We now have more land to build on, a literal forest of trees at our disposal, and enough iron for the time being. So I decided to start work on gathering the materials for my house and start planning where I wanted it to be. You see, I kind of wanted like a circular design, like in the center, to be like a central hub of everything, and each side leading out to a pathway. You'll get the idea once it's built. But finally, after three days or so of working on it, by the morning of day 12, the house was finally done, and I think it came out looking pretty nice. So after building the house, I decided that it was probably time to go and grab some obsidian and start preparing for enchanting and the nether. So I ran back down to the lava pool we saw earlier and grabbed enough obby to make a portal and an enchantment table. And by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but mining obsidian with a non-enchanted pickaxe just makes me angry. Like I was seething while mining this. I just ugh, I hate it so much. Anyways, obsidian rage aside, I returned to the surface and built myself a nether portal, which I know doesn't look amazing, we'll improve it later, um, and then I went and sorted out my storage and tended to the farm for the rest of the night. And by day 13, it was time for us to start heading into the nether, and wow, that was actually pretty quick, day 13 in the nether? Uh, anyways, um, I wanted to go in there to mainly get some gold to start trading with piglins for leather, because then I can actually make an enchantment table, considering that, you know, we have no cows. So once I arrived in the nether, I set out in search of gold, but after a while of looking and I couldn't find a single gold ore, in fact, I noticed that the area looked like a pre-1.16 nether and I'm in 1.18, so something was definitely off. But during my search for gold, I did spot a fortress, so we shall probably use that later, I, I, I don't really know, but uh, I headed back to the portal and started a strip mine in hopes of reaching new nether chunks because I thought that this was a man-made area that would have probably been made prior to 1.16 and therefore wouldn't have any of the things that I need in it. 
So I mined and mined and mined and well actually ended up coming out directly in front of a nether fortress and well I don't know if it's the same one but I don't care I just bridged over to it. And once I got over to said fortress area um, I saw some nether gold ore so we're in 1.16 like chunks now so this is actually useful to me. So I went and mined the gold and then realized how massive this nether fortress actually is. Like this place is, this place is pretty big, okay? And it's all cut off and like corrupted. I've never seen one like look like this. It was, it was weird. Anyways, after looking at the fortress in awe, I uh, made myself some gold armor so that the piggy boys wouldn't immediately be angry with me and then absolutely destroyed a ghast. Yeah, that's what you get, you overgrown screaming pillowcase. A pillowcase, really? That it don't matter. Anyways, I continued mining gold, being careful not to angle the piggy boys around me, um, as well as grabbing some bone blocks. I grabbed some bone blocks from the soul sand biome to use on my farm later on. And after grabbing them, I headed into the fortress and grabbed some nether wards, and then also went around looting some chests around the area in the fortress. And, well, I managed to get some horse armor, some gold, and two diamonds. So that's very nice, and I shall take it. Oh, and I also killed a singular blaze, but unfortunately didn't get a rod. Some gold mining and a piglin attack later, and it was finally time for me to begin trading. Now, at this point, I'll probably take most of the things that they trade me, but uh, I will not complain about leather or, like, ender pearls or anything like that. And after trading with this guy for, like, a 30 gold or something, I ended up with 7 pearls, a potion of fire resistance, and 10 leather. So I decided that would do for now, because I was sick of seeing the nether, and I headed home, stored my stuff away, and then made an enchantment table. However, we were still a long way off of level 30 enchants. Oh, also, I was hella hungry, so I broke some bone blocks down into bone meal, and I uh, got myself some more potatoes. Okay, so on day 16, I started work on adding the paths at each side of my island, joining them together at my house, so that we can really start making this place look good soon. Anyways, I ended up running out of gravel pretty quickly, so I just ran down the mine and grabbed a little bit more, and then continued on with the path making. But uh, during the process of making them, a beehive was in the way, so I kind of had to uh, remove it and then wait for the bees to de-aggro and then finally finish my final path. And then uh, I, I did give the bees a new home with some lovely flowers and some trees and, well, I think it came out looking pretty nice for now. Alrighty, so on day 17, things were really coming along now and everything was starting to take shape. So I decided to start work on restocking on wood for the next big expansion. So I spent the entire day just growing and chopping down trees and by the end of the day we had a decent amount of wood. Anyways, on the following couple of days I decided to work on the mine a little bit because I'd only seen caves that were covered in stone and being quite high up and I really wanted to see if there was anything hiding in the depth. So I continued my way down through the upper layers and down into the abyss in search of good loot. And well, eventually we found what I like to call a real cave but uh, there were hella mobs in here, okay? There was a lot of things in here. So I made my way down very carefully and then almost met my end by a skelly who needs to be signed to phase because this man didn't miss a single shot. But it's all good because when I got my health back I went and boofed him and then noticed the literal creeper army stood opposite me. Why is there so many things down here man? This is crazy. Anyways, I got to work on securing an area down here so that I at least had a slim chance of survival during this adventure. And whilst building my little safe haven, I got a visit from a farmer right here who I had to quickly put down because, well, I can't cure him and, uh, well, the one that I had earlier also despawned, so I just don't have enough time. Anyways, I moved deeper into the caves and immediately found a single vein of diamonds just chilling down here on its own. So uh, I grabbed it and then continued on my exploration. And, well, the creeper army kind of dealt with itself. <laughs> the, the idiots, man, idiots. After a little bit more exploring, I ended up stumbling across another singular vein of diamonds. And, well, I, I hate that they spawn in one vein so often. You get so excited and you mine it and it it's just disappointment. Anyways, one army of zombies later and I found my first two vein of diamonds. Woo, we're going up in the world. A two vein, yeah. But I, I guess in this day and age, a two vein's the best you can hope for, really, eh? And then shortly after finding the diamonds, I found myself a skelly spawner. So things were just going up and up from here. And they also had some melon seeds in the chest, which I love melons. So hell yeah, why not? I'll grab them. And then also found another two diamonds and then headed back home because I was sick of being attacked at every turn. And I'd also not seen the light of day in like an hour. So uh, yeah, anyways, I headed back to the surface. I stored away my stuff, I smelted down my golden iron and then went and just chilled out for the rest of the night. Alrighty, so after spending a couple days down in the mines, I decided it was time to expand again. And well, this one's a pretty big one, okay? Because the first circle is 50 by 50, but this new one is 100 by 100. So we, we have our work cut out for us here, okay? Anyways, I worked hard for days on forming the first layer of the outer circle, and oh boy, this thing already looks pretty cool. However, I did attempt to start filling it in, and uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna take a, like a lot of dirt to do this, so... Uh, Maybe not going to do that right now. 
Um, also, I'm going to use this outer layer right here as a tree farm because, well, you can plant a load of trees around this and uh, have a load of wood. But finally, by day 24, the ring was done and uh, everything was really coming along now. So all that was needed to do was filling in the thing with dirt and uh, also get some grass over there and some fences on the outside and maybe some like better bridges. So I decided to spend the rest of the day just working on the farm and giving it a new kind of like style thing that, well, I think it came out looking pretty good if I do say so myself. And then on day 25, I decided to head back into the nether to try my luck again with getting more leather because, well, I really wanted to enchant and I had some extra gold laying around from my time in the caves. So I headed back in and followed my path back to the fortress and then began trading again. And, well, I got attacked by an invisible ghast and then jumped by this wither skelly who, well, just take a look. Yeah, it was a scary time. The man pulled me to two hearts and almost killed me, but luckily I regened and survived and then went and killed him. And then tried to go back to trading with my piggy boy, but he disappeared, so uh, I found a safer spot with another pig and continued trading. And, well, by the end of the session, I had 13 more leather, 5 more pearls, and, uh, well, that wasn't too bad. And then I went and grabbed some more bone blocks, because I can, and they were just sitting there not being used, and uh, then I headed back home, stored my stuff away, and went to bed. And then I spent the entirety of day 26 just digging up dirt to finish off my ring, and to start work on a new project soon, which uh, will really make this place start coming together. So yeah, I just dug up dirt all day and used this little trick that turns gravel into dirt. It was very, very useful. And then on the following day, I placed it all down and managed to get all of the circle filled in and then went round adding a few fences, but didn't manage to finish this off because I had nowhere near enough wood to do that. Anyways, lack of wood aside, I then went round and planted like a hundred saplings all the way around the circle and boom, now we have a tree farm. Okay, so on day 28, I went round and grabbed a load of sand from the ocean floor and began placing it down one layer around my main island, just to start using it as a sugarcane farm and, uh, well, it actually didn't take up that much time or sand, so by the end of the day, we now had a sandbank around the island and the start of a soon-to-be pretty large sugarcane farm, so that's, you know, that's some good progress. Anyways, I spent the night adding more crops to the farm. And on the morning of day 29, I headed back over to the shipwreck to grab some more birch wood from it because I wanted to add some fences, like, dotted around my farm and, uh, well, I really wanted some variety in the wood to use and well this is the only way I can get birch wood considering that there's no other sapling so uh, yeah after clearing out the ship of all birch wood I headed to another one to check if there was any loot or any more birch wood and well there was some pretty good loot on the ship including a diamond which made me think that I probably should have come here sooner anyways I looted the rest of the ship and it didn't really have much except a zombie trap down here so uh, I headed home stored away all the stuff and then crafted some fences to place around my farm followed by a few lanterns on top of them and uh, boom there we go. It looks really nice. It looks kind of unusual, but uh, but I love it. It looks very symmetrical. It just looks good, okay? Anyways, on day 30, I was completely out of coal, so I headed back down into the cave in search of any I could find, but uh, actually ended up getting sidetracked and went on a massive mining spree, picking up basically everything I saw and actually ended up stumbling across this whopping vein of nine diamonds. Now, th this this took me back, okay? I I'm just as shocked as you are because I thought that the maximum you could get was eight, but then, you know, this map is handmade, so I'm assuming that's why. But to be fair to myself and the game, I threw three away so that things didn't get too easy, considering that, you know, a nine vein I didn't think could spawn naturally. So uh, RIP extra diamonds, you will be missed. I, I just don't feel right taking them, you know? Anyways, after that incident, I returned to the surface and smelted down all the loot that I got and made a stone cutter. And by this point, the sun was already rising. So I spent the rest of the day working on tidying up the entrance to the mine because, well, it was just kind of like a hole in the ground and everything around it looked somewhat good. And this was the only thing that hadn't had a glow up yet. So uh, yeah, but by the end of the day, I think it came out looking pretty good. Okay, so now we're on day 32 when we've come pretty far already, but now it's time to really get things going. Because uh, when I woke up, I made myself a diamond sword, a diamond chest plate, and then crafted a few gapples, you know, just, just for if. Anyways, after making them, I headed outside and started working on a little pond area just outside my house. And you may be wondering, hey poppers, why do you really need a pond? I mean, you're surrounded by hella ocean, what use would you have for a pond? Well, I don't really have a use for a pond, you got me there, but uh, it looks good, it's got a good aesthetic to it, so I'm building it. So my idea to make this area look all nice and cosy was to have a pond in the middle surrounded by some trees and some flowers and uh, maybe a little path leading through. 
So I started out with the pond and it ended up coming out pretty good. Um, and then I spotted a wandering trader on my land. So I went over to check what he had and well, he did have some pretty good stuff for the pond, but I was a poor boy and did not have the emeralds to purchase it. So instead I bought some moss because well, I can farm it and it's gonna look really good. Anyways, I began work on the path and uh, it all came together linking in the middle with the sides of the pond. Then I dotted a few trees and flowers around as well as some moss and azalea trees. And uh, well, here it is. I'm really happy with how this addition came out. All right, it looks really good. Things it's a very nice tranquil area, okay? Very nice. Okay, so it's time for some big work, all right? I wanted to light this place up a bit uh, and finish off some stuff that I've been putting off, such as finishing the bridges everywhere and just making everything look better by adding fences and just stuff and, and little details. So I spent a good few days working on all that, as well as farming out my sugar cane in the time being and uh, grabbing some more iron for lanterns alongside everything. And on day 36, everything was looking a lot better, but I was out of iron because of how many lanterns I crafted. But hey, it, look, all right, they, they look better than torture, so it was worth it. Anyways, I had a little trip down the mines to restock, but uh, whilst I was down here, I stumbled across a water cave and remembered something about the stronghold for this map being underwater. Because yeah, again, it's a man-made map. So I went inside to have a look around, but saw absolutely no signs of a stronghold. So uh, I called it a successful few days, smelted down my iron, and went to bed. All right, so after a few building days, it's time to head back into the nether to kill some blazers because I really wanted to start brewing some potions soon. So after arriving at the fortress, I held my gapples tightly and went in search of a blaze spawner killing a couple wither skellies in the process, and then eventually stumbled across a spawner and got to work eradicating these fiery boys from existence for their ever so sought after rods. And well, after grabbing more than enough, I headed back home to make myself a brewing stand, as well as some glass bottles and the ingredients to begin cooking up some potions, and then organized them nice and neatly in this barrel right here. And then I spent the rest of the day building a little crappy nether wart farm under my house, because well, I decided to go small this time, because I usually go too big and I never use that much nether wart, let's be real, we don't use that much. Anyways, on the following couple days I went underground again but this time in search of an amethyst geode or amethyst cluster or whatever whatever they're called uh, we'll call them purple things that make noise anyways I wanted to go in search of one of these because uh, I really wanted to put one underneath my enchantment area to kind of have like a, an amethyst geode under my enchantment table because I think it looked really nice anyways after stumbling across a few caves for a while and mining all around uh, I did actually end up stumbling across one so I grabbed all the calcite the amethyst and the the other snuff I think it's called, like smooth basalt or something and after destroying this very beautiful natural geode, uh, I returned to the surface and began work on rebuilding it in my own image. Oh, uh, and I also made myself some purple glass because I had access to the flowers and a multitude of dyes and uh, well, it turned out pretty nice. I've never built anything like this before, but uh, I shall 100% be doing a geode enchanting area again, maybe in the hardcore series, okay, because this looks real good. And I know the table can't go in the center, it's because I built it the wrong size, but I'm, I'm limited with space here, okay? But it still looks okay, all right? But sorry about the non-center table. Okay, so on day 41, I went in search of the stronghold that was hidden underneath the island, because, well, I thought there could be a library in there, and that would save me so much time getting all the books that I needed for the enchantment table, instead of having to trade for leather in the nether. So I went around exploring all the upper caves for uh, quite a while, you know, checking every nook and cranny, but eventually, after a little while of searching, I spotted some stone bricks under the wall, water in this big ravine right here and almost died getting to it but uh, I made my way inside deeper and deeper into the stronghold until I came across a room full of skellies uh, this place was just crawling with mobs but uh, yeah it, it was not a nice place also if you're wondering why I didn't get the achievement it's because this is a man-made stronghold and I'm assuming that's the reason why it doesn't come up Anyways, after dealing with a room filled with skellies, I uh, opened a door to a magma cube trapped in a room with a chest, so I quickly dispatched him and, uh, well, found a chest full of potions, and it even had a, a luck potion in there. I don't actually know what that does, but hey, you know what, I'll take it. Anyways, I popped a night vision potion and continued making my way through this awful, awful place. Oh look, and now it's time for cave spiders. I am absolutely terrified of these things, I absolutely hate them. So instead of taking these little gremlins head on, I decided to break blocks around the sides to try and break the spawners. It was, it was, a, whole, it was a whole ordeal, okay, right, um, but they ended up getting a couple good hits on me, but I wiped them out nonetheless. After searching around the walls of the stronghold for a little bit longer, I actually ended up finding a library, but there was an absolute horde of zombies in there, so uh, I dealt with them hopped down and then uh, took a load of books from this place. So uh, yeah, I grabbed my books and went home. And when I got back, I made all my bookshelves, placed them down and got to work on enchanting and then disenchanting and then re-enchanting to get Fortune 2. Oh, and I also made an anvil and combined the two pickaxes and then boom, a, a very nice pickaxe now. 
And then I spent the rest of the day trying to get Silk Touch on an Iron Pickaxe, but uh, no, no, it didn't happen. Okay, so on day 43, we were quite low on XP, so uh, I made my way down to the mob spawner I found earlier to set up a little crappy mob grinder down there, so that I can fund my uh, heavy XP usage on enchants. Then once the farm was made, I sat at it all day, and well, it didn't give me an insane amount of XP, but it was, it was pretty decent. Anyways, after I was done at the farm, I returned home, smelted down some iron, and went to bed. Anyways, on day 44, we'd had a few weird days, so now it's time for me to get to work on building the second ring. That's right, it's time to expand some more, but this time, instead of adding some normal stuff, we're gonna have two halves, okay? We're gonna have one half nether warped biome, and we're gonna have the other half nether crimson biome, and I think it's gonna look really cool. But this was going to be a lot of work, so first I managed to get Silk Touch on a pickaxe and then headed into the nether in search of both a crimson biome and a warped biome to begin completely tearing them apart. So the first one I found was actually a warped biome and it also had a ruined portal right next to it but uh, didn't really have anything there. So I headed over and began tearing the whole place up, alright? I took trees down, I took the floor, I took everything oh and i also brought my anvil with me to keep repairing my pickaxe so that you know i could keep things running smoothly when my pick gets low on durability anyways after a while of successful nether deforestization i headed home to store the stuff away and then went back to the nether to continue digging it up and repeated this process a few times until i had what i deemed would be enough warped nylon and warped logs to uh, complete their half of the island and then I set out in search of a crimson biome, which actually wasn't that far away, and then repeated the entire process again, but this time with red. Now, at this point, I'd collected a lot of materials, mainly wood, so I got to work on the outline of the circle with giving each side their respective colours, and, uh, well, this circle was confusing as hell to build. I don't know why I kept messing it up, I literally had an image next to me, but it was just, it, I don't know, it messed with me. But eventually, I placed all the wood down, and now it was time to start placing down the warped and uh, the crimson nylon in their respective areas, and then finally went around placing the, uh, the fungi down, and then bone mealing it all, and... Well, here's the end result. This thing looks really, really nice. I am really impressed with this. Um, and I also noticed at this point that I had a setting turned off in my shaders that made everything look really good. So uh, sorry about that. It's on now. But yeah, the nether area looks really nice. Very, very happy with it. Good job. So after all the expansion was done, it was time to finally start gearing up to kill the dragon and maybe even a couple of withers alongside it. So I set back out down the mines with my fortune pickaxe in hand, ready to get stacked on diamonds. So I searched around the caves for a while, not really finding anything other than a few bits of iron and some redstone, but eventually there was a diamond shining in the roof of a cave, and well, I went to go and mine it, and my god, look how many are here, there's so many. This was absolutely insane, I guess I was wrong about the amount of diamond veins you can get earlier, anyways, we got 20 diamonds from this with fortune, and I think it was an 8 vein, so uh, definitely not complaining, but it wasn't enough, so I cut my celebration short and continued through the winding caves and caverns until I found one more that gave me 4, hmm, uh, but after that I uh, got slapped by a load of mobs, but it, it's okay, I dealt with them and continued through the caves until I stumbled across another diamond and a cave absolutely packed with iron ore, I mean just look at this, there's so much of it, so so I, uh, I grabbed it all and ended up stumbling across an area of cave which I was quite familiar with. This is this is where I broke the geode earlier. Anyways, after getting 28 diamonds, I decided that was enough for me and headed back to the surface to craft the rest of my armor and tools. And uh, just like that, we are now fully kitted out in diamonds. Let's go. So then for the next day and a half, I uh, stayed down at the zombie spawner to rack up some XP to enchant my armor before going and fighting the dragon. And after being down there a while, I ended up with enough XP to enchant some of my armor and some of my tools, even though I forgot to enchant my sword for some reason, but uh, that's okay because I decided to put that pumpkin to good use that I got all those days ago, and uh, well, I made an iron golem. Now, the one that I made in the last video was called Gaston's, and he didn't really last too long, but uh, this one shall be called Alfred, and just look at him over there, okay, he's chilling by the water he's such a lovely guy this guy will live forever all right so on day 59 it was time to start cooking up some potions so uh, i went and grabbed some nether wart and began brewing everything i needed and uh, well like i do every time we needed instant health slow falling and speed but i already had that this time as well as a jump boost and strength potion so this this, this dragon is not ready anyways i brewed them all up upgraded them and boom we're now ready to kill a dragon so on the next day i headed back down to the stronghold and made my way to the port room and jumped in and well I actually managed to hit all the pillars quite quickly and accurately which is a big change for me considering I miss my shots quite a lot 
Anyways, it was now time to kill the dragon, and oh my god, this man did not want to die, okay? I hit him a load of times with the bow, but every time he came into perch, he flew off seconds later. But eventually, I got some good hits in and almost died to an enderman, but uh, after dealing with that inconvenience, I put an end to the dragon and started my journey through the outer end islands in search of the elytra. Now, this is always a gamble of how long it's going to take me to find a city with a ship. So uh, this time we end up getting very, very lucky. And there was one literally right next to the portal. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty big city too. So I uh, bridged my way over to it, ran in, dealt with the shulkers, and then went deeper and deeper into the city for that sweet, sweet loot that ended up being eh, okay. And then I headed to the ship, grabbed the loot and the elytra, and then headed back home, stole my stuff away, and went to bed. Okay, so whilst I was in the end, I actually managed to score myself a lovely looting three sword. And, well, it just so happens that I want to make four beacons. So I headed back into the nether with my sword and a, a luck potion in hand, whatever the hell this thing does. Uh, and I went on a rampage, killing wither skeletons for their skulls. And, well, even with a looting three sword, this took so long. I managed to get the first one after 10 minutes, and then after that, they were just, they were really far and few between. But eventually, after about an hour and a half, maybe even more of just pure pain and frustration, I finally had enough skulls. So I grabbed some soul sand and then headed into the end and, uh, well, killed them 100% legitimately. Okay, just hear me out, okay? This is a lot easier way, it's a lot quicker way to kill them. I've just spent an hour farming the skulls, I do not have it in me to kill them legitimately, okay? So I wanna see comments down in the comment section, right? I want you justifying this, okay? I, I want justification. Anyways, after killing all the withers, I grabbed some extra obby from one of the end pillars and returned home to craft all my beacons. And now, all I needed to do was build a mega beacon underneath my house, but uh, I really don't have the iron for that, so you know what? that means that's right it means that day 70 is an iron mining day but uh, i actually don't need that much more so it didn't take me that long i just went around mining all the veins of iron that i ran by previously when uh, when i didn't need iron anyways after grabbing my iron i smelted it all down and even had to make more furnaces fern fern eyes to to help with the amount that i brought back okay i had a lot of iron but after that, I began working on the pyramid, but realized very, very quickly that it'd be really stupid for me to make a full one, considering how much iron it would actually need for four beacons. So I just decided to do a half one instead, and well, I'm pretty happy with how things came out. It looks really good. But on day 71, storage was becoming quite a problem because everything was all over the place, and if you know me, you know I like myself a nice, clean, sorted out storage. So I got to work on building a little area next to the mines that would be used for storing all of my stuff in. And well, I've never done this style of building before with the, the stripped kind of logs as beams and stuff without a guide, but I think it came out looking pretty good. I, I definitely feel like I'm improving with building. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. Anyways, after the build was done, I made some chests and gave them their own theme, if, if that's what you call it, um, and added items, frames to it, and uh, well, here's the end result. It looks pretty good. Anyways, after sorting out some of the boring stuff like storage, I decided that I wanted to add some end islands around my area to add even more decoration between the outer circles. So I headed back into the end and started completely tearing the place up, and uh, also tried to silk touch a chorus fruit, which worked, to my surprise. But I don't know the first thing about these things, and I don't know whether they grow if you plant them, so I guess we'll find out. Anyways, after grabbing all the necessary resources and materials, I headed back home and began work on adding some of the islands dotted around everywhere in various sizes with the chorus fruits on top. And, well, they actually grow pretty fast and by themselves, so that's good. Anyways, after completing all the islands, I uh, headed back into the nether to grab some glowstone, so that way I can light up the water underneath them and the islands to really make them, you know, stand out and uh, look, look better. And uh, boom, here's what five days of hard work comes out to. And also, I realize that this video is a lot of building, but I kind of wanted to do something different this time around of the 100 days. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, on day 82, I got up and I was going to combine the shovel that I got from the end with my current one because it had efficiency on it, but uh, it had been a waste of time to do that, so I just saved the XP and didn't do it. Anyways, I went on a massive sand gathering spree again because I wanted to make some glass. Some purple slash magenta glass to be precise, because I wanted to go and cover the top layer of water all the way around the end islands in purple glass so that like it looks cool and it like goes shiny and purple and glowy and so it'll just look good anyways i headed under the water grabbing as much sand as possible and using doors wherever i could as well just to speed up the process 
Also, thank God for respiration or aqua affinity, whichever one it is. Uh, you you've got to love it, okay? It's great. Anyways, after getting more sand than any sane person would ever need to get, uh, I started smelting it all down into glass, and, well, this took so long you have no idea. But whilst the furnaces were doing their thing, I got to work on making as much magenta dye as possible. And my god, I broke so many flowers. But uh, hey, it's a good thing we've got a lot of lapis. Anyways, I made myself the dye, added it onto the glass, and finally, at long last, after days of smelting and breaking flowers, it was time to start placing down all of this beautiful, beautiful magenta glass. So, I got to work, and, well, I did make some good progress, but definitely needed more sand during the process. Uh, a lot more, actually. Uh, R.I.P. Diamond Shovel. But eventually we were done, and with the shaders I used, this thing looked super, super shiny and glowy, and I really, really liked it. So it was definitely worth the time invested. Okay, so we've come pretty far in this 100 days and made some really cool builds along the way, but we still only have diamond armor. So I repaired my pickaxe and now I guess it's time to go on an insane netherite mining spree. Woo, yeah, let's go. Uh, but no, I, I went into the nether and tried to grab some netherite by just spam mining everywhere. But I did almost break my pickaxe finding absolutely zero ancient debris. But after I repaired it and tore up the nether some more, we finally found some pretty quickly. But decided to only go for 12 because, well, I know it won't really do everything, but it's enough for what we want it for. Anyways, I headed home, smelted it all down, repaired my pickaxe, and then made myself a netherite chest plate and leggings, and a diamond pick. But by this point, the sun of day 94 began to rise, and I was feeling quite adventurous, so I made myself a boat and set sail for, well, I don't really know, anything. Maybe, maybe a shipwreck, maybe some land, who knows what I'm going to find out here, but hopefully something cool. And well, after sailing for a while, I finally spotted some land that wasn't my island, so I went and beached my boat, and do you remember me asking for a shipwreck or some land? Well, how's about a shipwreck on land? Hey, look at that one. That works fine, I shall take it. Anyways, after looting the ship, I continued across my newly discovered lands, but uh, after walking for a while, I noticed that there was nothing here. Like, nothing. There was no life, there was no structures, and there was really, like, not many trees. It felt really, really creepy. Oh, and I also found a ruined portal with a fishing rod in it, but uh, after that I went and explored some more and genuinely felt quite uneasy in this place. I don't know why, it's just, it's so big yet it's so empty and there were some more structures that, uh, that had some okay loot, but it just made things feel even more off. Anyways, as night fell, things just got worse, so uh, I booked it back to my boat and headed home. And actually managed to get home by the morning of day 95. But when I got back to my island, I actually decided to take a look around at what we built, and wow, I I'm really impressed with this. I've not actually taken a minute to stop and look so far, and uh, wow, I I'm really glad about it. So I decided to take this opportunity and uh, make a load of maps and make a display board kind of thing to really see how my island looked. And uh, well, look at this. It, I think it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good from a bird's eye point of view on a map. Very nice. Anyways, I decided to spend the next couple days just working on tidying up the mines and adding stone bricks all around them and all down the staircase just to have it look cleaner because it was the worst looking thing on the island currently. Okay, and uh, day 100. It's been quite the lonely adventure this time, so I decided to use all my iron on iron golems and make an army of them because, well, they were my only friends now, and because I think the bees died uh, earlier on. But uh, anyways, I finally made some fireworks and used my elytra to see my island from the top down for the first time, and I was really, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, and also, I was really happy that we had just survived another 100 days, but this time on an isolated, lonely little survival island. And we went from this crappy little dirt patch to having this massive, vibrant island that I am really, really impressed with. Now, as always, thank you all so very much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video at any point and you would be so kind, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing. It would really, really mean the world to me. And be sure, all right, don't forget 30% off code poppers at checkout, all right? Go grab yourself some good good, okay? Till the 25th, till the 25th. Anyways, if you want to stay up to date with the videos and any behind the scenes things and get a free cookie, then go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And if you want to know what mods and texture packs and resource packs and shaders and everything I use in my videos, then head over to the Discord. There's a full list of download links and tutorials in there for you to have. Anyways, that's it from me today. Stay safe till next time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Adios, peeps.